Before last Friday, I had only seen one James Bond movie. The more I thought about Daniel Craig's last outing as the iconic spy, I knew I had to rewatch his movies to fully understand the backstory. So I binged his James Bond films and capped it off with No Time to Die, and what a perfect goodbye to his portrayal of Bond. No Time to Die is the biggest, boldest, most bombastic, and emotional Bond film I've experienced to date. It redefines what these spy thrillers are and can achieve to be. No Time to Die takes the same personal path of Skyfall. Here we find a retired Bond preparing to live his life with Madeline Swan. yet his past continues to haunt him, and no matter how much he attempts to avoid it, it will always catch up to him reeling him back into a mission. When morals become murky with MI6, the fate of the world is at stake, and Madeline's safety is endangered. 007 is back in business, and it becomes the mission of his life. The long-awaited Bond takes no time to recapture the essence of the entire series with Daniel Craig which has been to some degree the way this franchise has never been afraid to take risks. Though it is possible to trace the personality of this Bond to many of the Bonds of the past, Craig has succeeded in making his films feel distinctively his own. Craig truly gives everything to his scenes. My favorite scenes with Craig included his teamwork with Ana de Armas, and I was especially moved during his scenes with Leia Sado. I love Jeffrey Wright and Ralph Fiennes, Christoph Waltz, and Rami Malek were appropriately evil villains. Director Kerry Joji Fukunaga has done an amazing job to not only bring his own flavor to the Bond franchise, but to tie all the previous Daniel Craig Bond films together for an especially satisfying conclusion. While clocking in at almost three hours, Fukunaga manages to balance the pacing, the action, and the slower moments. It never drags in my opinion, slowing the story down wasn't a bad decision as it helps the film to flow better. While the story follows the typical Bond story template, what makes Fukunaga's film stand out is the action. No Time to Die is a sprawling epic, strutting around the world through a gallery of familiar faces and new characters that steal our hearts. But at its heart is the dilemma of a hero, a man torn between the right thing and himself. What defines Craig's James Bond isn't in his smoothness, it isn't in the cars he drives, or the martinis he drinks, not even the women at his side. It's in the attachments he forms in a constant search for permanence. And no time to die embodies that search to lead to the realization that permanence is antithetical to 007. That 007 can't exist while James Bond lives. I never thought I would ever cry during a James Bond movie, but Hans Zimmer and director Fukunaga pulled it off big time. I have no attachment to James Bond or the movie franchise, but the final mix of imagery and score was tragically beautiful. The final 10 minutes tore me to pieces in a way I cannot describe. It's a must-see for die-hard Bond fans, but also a must-see if you just love cinema. Tune in every Friday for new movie videos. Please like, share, and subscribe. Comment down below what other movies you would like me to do videos on. Thank you, Mom, for editing the scripts for my movie essays. I appreciate you. Till next time, thanks for watching. Catch you on the flip side.